<clears throat> All right. You know, the Bible is full, full of things that you don't like. I've came across many things that I have not liked, but let's just tell the truth. Yahweh is not asking me for my opinion in anything. I was nowhere, and you were nowhere when he hung this earth on nothing, when he created the heavens and the firmaments. Uh, I, he didn't ask me for my opinion. He didn't ask me for my opinion then, and he's not asking me for my opinion now. But the one thing he is asking me to do as a ambassador of the kingdom and a representative of this truth is to represent his truth. Not, not your opinion or my opinion, and I do that very well. Uh, some time ago, um, you know, people started asking me about the subject of polygyny. Now, here in America, you automatically going to draw uh, certain conclusions based on the society and, and based on what religion has told you. But if you really truly want to know what the father thinks about polygyny, then you don't have to do like everybody else that has to do. You don't have to go to the source of truth if you believe that the Bible is the truth. Well, I, I went to the truth. I went to the Bible. And I saw that American culture and American society is in direct opposition against the Father, against the Word of God, as many of you call it. And I saw that not only did he um, condone it, not only did he approve of it, it was the ancient... Hebrew people's lifestyle and what he says to one he says to all and not only that he even said to King David after, after David had committed adultery with Uriah the Hittite he said if you would have wanted more that means more wise all you had to do was but ask I would have gave them to you and David had already at that time had about uh, 16 wives and no telling how many concubines but see what we're doing is we're trying to take a Greco-Roman European monoligamous culture and we're trying to fuse it into a Hebraic Eastern Western perspective in society and it's just simply ain't gonna work and and the one reason why they don't want it is the same thing as going back to the history uh, in, in Egypt you think about this the Israelites was growing exponentially they was growing so much and so fast that Pharaoh feared that these people may overrun them so they started a genocide by killing all the Hebrew men uh, and of course they took the women all right they wanted to kill the hebrew men and then that would only leave the egyptian men mating with the hebrew women wouldn't it and that's the same thing we've got going on in society today so whether christian religion likes it or not likes it or not the bottom line is is that the bible is true and somebody's lying <laughs> it's just a fact and the problem we having today is that most people especially men don't have the intestinal fortitude nor the stomach to stand on this Bible and to stand on this truth. And again, I'll say, again, now I don't know how much many more honest you can be about this subject or this matter. If there's anybody out there who claims to be some type of a scholar, now you need to be a scholar because I'm tired of trying to argue and be in, in contention with a bunch of ignorant, dumb, stupid, novelist, foolish people who think that they know what the word says and they only know two scriptures. Or people who claim uh, self-appointed elders, self-appointed pastors, and, 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 and they don't have anybody to confirm their ministry, nobody but their immediate family. I ain't, uh-uh. Uh, if you're going to talk to me and we're going to have a civil discussion and debate, number one, my requirements is this. Let's do this openly. Number two, let's make this a very healthy discussion so that people, instead of us hollering and screaming at each other, we can have tact and respect for each other and we can let the Bible be the truth and let the people judge. Um, and, and let's do this in such a manner that we can have nothing but the utmost respect of each other without calling each other names. You see, now, hey, I, I had a guy not too long ago want to enter into a biblical discussion with me, and he said, well, we're going to have a nice civil discussion, and we wasn't even a good three minutes into it, and he started calling me all kind of names and disparaging comments simply because his feelings and emotions got the best of him, and he had little, if any at all, self-control because the truth was whooping his religion, and, and of course, you know, most of the people are religious today, and, and of course, you got you people out there that, that actually think that, that people like myself, we make up truth as we go. But then again, bring your proof, bring, bring your arguments, or give them to someone of intelligent conversation in mind, and let us all do this thing openly, video record it, and let's do it live so there won't be any chance for any video editing so we can have a live, a live, something concrete to go back on. Uh, I mean, 
I don't know how to be any more honest than that. You can't be any more honest than that, than, than what I just got finished saying. But you know what Pastor Dow usually gets? I usually get a bunch of people go out and make these videos behind the scenes, expressing their feelings and emotions, and, and all these cowards run all over the place. And the truth is, they don't want to know the truth, and they're letting you know that they don't want to know the truth. They want things their way. They want this world to function their way. They say they love the Bible, they love the Bible, and, 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 and they love the Word, and, and, and they are religious in nature, but yet and still, when you look at a lot of these dissenters, when you look at all the, a lot of these disagreeers and these agitators, you look at a lot of their lifestyles, their lifestyle does not reflect the holiness of their scriptures. I got people mad at me because I agree um, with the subject of polygyny and they really got mad at me when I said if a polygynist family came to this congregation, they would be more than welcome at the congregation the straight way. They sure would because it's biblical. It is biblical. But then, but then these same people, these same people would turn around and, 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 and let the homosexuals come in and, into their lives and be their best friends and their buddies, peas and chums and pals. These same people would turn around and live in fornication and commit adultery. And, and it's all right. These same people would sanction sodomy and stuff. And they don't think that there's something wrong <laughs> with their mind up here. Their conscience is defiled because they have a reprobate mind. Because everything I just got finished naming on this last part is literally an abomination to the Most High Yah. It's an abomination. Do you know what abomination is? Now, whether you like it or not, biblical polygyny is not an abomination. I don't care what the United States government says. I don't care that the Mormons caved in um, to, to the force of the United States government some time ago. The bottom line is, is that how in the world can you say that you love Abraham and you reject his lifestyle? You are a hypocrite. <laughs> See, we just had another litmus test. Where what saith you? What saith you? Huh? Where you at on any of these stuff? See, anytime that we say that we're gonna embark on believing the Bible, when it when it says you're gonna grow in grace and grow in knowledge, you're gonna be tested and proven and tried. Your heart is every single step of the way. And you're gonna come to a crossroads one day that is gonna determine whether you continue to keep going on in favor with Yah or you fall out of favor and you go about to establish your own righteousness and your own religion like so many people are doing today. Well, I've seen a lot of people fail the test, literally just fail the test simply because they don't like what the Bible says. And hey, that's your prerogative. Um, hope you're right in the end. Um, but it's just a sad, sad thing. It really truly is. Anyway, I hope I said something to encourage your hearts and minds. Um, and I know these are thought-provoking videos here this morning, but consider what I say and, and stop being prejudiced. Stop being prejudiced and, and stop being bigots that many of you are. I mean, you're just so intolerant of other people's perspective and viewpoints, yet you go and lash out your own. You know, it's amazing. Um, not unless they have feminine spirits. I hardly ever hear from men. Who disagree with me but yet and still I, I don't never hear these men want to contend with me in an open civil discussion and debate either but I mostly hear from a lot of women behind the scenes and boy these women rage when they man you you want to fight man get into um, what you call a religious fight and let the women start giving their opinion oh boy they never go away my wife said to me she says you know what a lot of these women that are so passionate against you they get on here make videos they uh they make websites and everything about you she said i'm telling you they have something in their heart for you and their rejection is their rebellion there's something seriously wrong with these women my wife says to me she says because if a man says something i don't like or if he does something I, I just turn the page i mean after all i'm under your headship i'm under your authority what do i care but boy, 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 see you, you people are seeing how, how inappropriate and how, to, how out of bounds a lot of these homes are today because this Western society sanctions this type of feminist rebellion. And, and these men today, they're castrated. They can't do nothing against these women. But I know one thing, I'm so happy that it, in the ministry of straightway that we have honorable women, um, beautiful Israelite women. Uh, and, and there's more beautiful daughters of Zion being manifested every single day. Uh, and and they're, they, they are doing well. And you, you can see it in the reflection of their countenance. When you have somebody that's a murmur, a, a complainer, a backbiter, a hater, a vindictive, and all this stuff, look at their face. 
it tells the story. But then you look at the serenity on the face of a true daughter of Zion, and you be the judge. You just be the judge. Hey, anyway, y'all have a blessed day, all right? I know I just came on here, and no doubt I'm probably going to lose about 300 subscribers today, but hey, you over here to hear the truth. You know I'm a pastor, so you just heard it. You heard it straightway. Shalom.